Hello and welcome, my name is John Dickinson for Boris FX, and in this five-part tutorial series, I'm going to break down how I created this look using both Boris FX and other software. In this section, we're going to start by looking at some of the key techniques I use to model the dragon in Cinema 4D. So let's get started. To start off, I want to walk you through some of the key techniques that I used in Cinema 4D to model this logo. And I was pretty happy with the way this came out. The whole thing is done using the Polygon Pen tool. Let's take a look at the main things that I did. I'm not going to walk through it step by step. I'm going to turn this one off. And I just come to my front view. Now I only had one guide image. Just grab this off the net. It's a really great looking dragon. And I couldn't really tell whether this was actually modeled in 3D or it was illustrated. But either way, it looks pretty good. And I thought it would be a really good challenge. So obviously the first main challenge is that I only have one image. I don't have any side views. I uh, don't have a top view. So any depth for this has to be eyeballed rather than um, added using guide images, which was fairly tricky because you can see there's actually sort of multiple depths in this. So to start with, I used the polygon pen. So ME on the keyboard and try to keep the poly count fairly low to start with. Just enough to sort of, you know, hold the curvature because I knew that I would be subdividing this later, but it's good to start low poly, especially because um, I need to get these lines established and also the depth, more importantly, the depth established and trying to establish this kind of depth at high poly is really difficult because you very quickly introduce lumps and bumps. So establishing the shape low poly is really important. But not too few polygons so as you don't hold the, the curvature. So there's a few polygons in there. If I drop this into a subdivision surface just by holding down the Alt key and clicking on subdivision surface, you can see that rounds all of that out. What I can do is just go into point mode and without anything selected, I'm already in tweak mode. I can just click and I can drag these. And one thing I can also do with that point selected is hold down the period key and drag right. Same here, period key and drag right and that will weight that. I won't do this one because, um, you know, obviously I'm going to be adding more polygons. But once I got a certain amount established, then I'd come into the different view, um, maybe this view here, and just pull that forward. And you can see that's rounding that out. You can see it much more easily in the uh, perspective view. Yeah, that rounds that out. So. Once again, hold down the period key, drag with the left mouse button to the right, and that will sharpen that out. So that's 100% weighted. And if I click on the new weight tag that's created, you can see there's the weighted points and there's the weighted edge. And this was used throughout this modeling. Now that that's weighted, I can go back into point mode and just drag these into place like that. So I can keep that pretty low poly and just follow along these main lines. So that's the way I approach this. Let's go into this number one here. This is a more established shape. You can see I've come up and added all the polygons in here. If we go to the side view or perspective view, you can see how I've tried to match what I saw in the image here as far as depth goes. And one thing you can use to do that is the Fong angle. We just turn on the subdivision surface. Obviously, I haven't got um, this weighted at the moment. But what I have to go through and do is you know, select that, select all the leading edges. I can do that using the image. All the main edges. Double click those. And 
think that looks pretty good. Q to turn on the subdivision surface, hold down the period key, drag to the right, and that sharpens those out. So you can see with the Fong tag, I can actually see the shading. And looking at the lighting on here, it gives me a pretty good idea about what the shading, about what the depth is based on the shading. So just even using the default light, I can get a pretty good idea just with the Fong shading about how deep this might be. It's not it's not perfect because I obviously don't have a I don't have a guide, but um, you know, so this could be a little further back. You know, it's not perfect, but it's close enough. So once I had the main shape established in low poly using the SDS weight tag just to weight the main uh, leading edges. You can notice that I haven't added any of the details, I haven't added the top um, horn, none of these, I haven't added the tongue or that tooth, I haven't added any of the eye because all of these details require a higher polygon count in order to be able to held in place without affecting the curvature. Obviously, if I go in and add a cut in there, I'm instantly going to mess up that curvature, which is no good. So I need to establish a higher subdivision level and maintain that curvature. And this is why going low poly, weighting your edges, and then subdividing that is such a good technique for something like this. Let me just turn that one off. And turn this one on. And you can see that's what I've done here. So this one has been subdivided once more. Let me just show you what I mean. I'm going to turn that one back on. So here, turn the subdivision surface on. I've got a subdivision renderer and editor level of one. So if I was to press the C key, watch what happens to the subdivision level. It doubles the subdivision level. And see how it's held all of those leading edges in place. And that one's been moved slightly. That's okay. I can come in with my, you know, with my move tool and just move that back into place because I'm still fairly low poly. And there was a fair bit of moving going into this perspective view and checking to see whether I'd push that back. I was uh, very careful wherever possible to use the slide tool because that, that prevented that from happening. Just sliding it like that. Obviously not that easy to slide those ones. So if I come back into this view and right click and you see I'm on normal, change that back to axis. And just drag that out. So very, very careful to go backwards and forwards to make sure I wasn't moving the point off of that plane. Because as soon as you start doing that kind of thing, then it, it destroys everything. I jump backwards and forwards a lot, paying a lot of attention every time I moved a point to make sure that I wasn't messing up that really nice, you know, flat, even geometry that I'd established in low poly. Because as soon as you start subdividing, obviously you're inc increasing the poly count. And once you increase the poly count, you have a much greater chance of adding lumps and bumps just by accidentally pushing points around. That's not such an issue at low poly, but you really want to make sure you've established everything as much as you can, as perfectly as you can before you subdivide. And now I have enough geometry in order to start adding in the other details. Being very careful, like I said, not to add other details and mess up the um, geometry the topology that I've already established. Let's turn that one off. So that's that stage there. I can go in and start adding in the eye. Uh, there's enough geometry to be able to add in the horns. Notice here on this one though, um, this, let's go to polygon mode. Got cockatoos outside. Notice how this one is curved back. I 
miscalculated that one at first. I thought from the actual image that this was sort of curved back. Um, not curved back, um, sort of slanted back. But then I noticed down the bottom here that this really does look flat. So I decided in the end to make sure that this whole frill here down the back actually was flat, and which made it much easier to put these pieces in. You'll see what I mean in a moment. Let me just turn that one off and I'll come to number three. Okay, so here in number three, you can see there's those flat sections. And I've added in the, the um, uh, frills here. You can see I've used sort of looping strategies rather than carrying through edges all the way through. Or carrying loops all the way through is much easier to just do a little looping strategy there. But I've had enough geometry now to be able to add in all of those details now that I've established the overall shape at low poly. And once again, you can see as necessary, I've just been weighting um, various edges. See, I also added some extrusion as well. It's not perfectly straight. You can see it's a little bit wonky. But you only ever see it from the front, so so that looks pretty good. But it's not uh, the poly count's not high enough. It's not subdivided enough. If I just quickly render that, you can see it's fairly low poly. So how do I add another level of subdivision and still keep still maintain those details? Well, if I drop this into a subdivision surface like this. Notice how it's still actually maintaining it's maintaining those hard edges because I still have this um, subdivision weighting tag on. If we render that, still get a reasonably good result. And if you were happy with that, you could do that. I'm just going to select this, go into edge mode. And deselect. And I'm going to come down to the toolbar here and I'm going to choose, uh, let's see which one, select broken fong edges and check that out. I've broken all of those fong edges, so I'm just going to uncheck that or choose unbreak fong shading. And see how that rounds that out? So even with subdivision surface weighting. You can see how, select this one. Now should I deselect that? And deselect. Even with subdivision uh, surface weighting, you can see how we still get kind of this weird looking edge. Now I could select the Fong tag and turn off use edge breaks. And I could adjust the Fong angle. Bring that down. But the trouble with this is it works in some areas, but it doesn't work in others. It's almost impossible to find a sweet spot because if I bring that too low, then I start to get this faceting. So working with the subdivision weight tag and fong angle generally is not a good option. So it looked great in some areas, but it looked really crappy in others. I'm going to undo that. Okay, so, so that's why I chose to break the fong edges. Currently, I've got that turned off. I'm just going to undo. There we go. So with all of the fong edges broken, now, let me quickly render that. So now we get a fairly, except for up the eye, this, was a, this wasn't completed at this stage. Overall, even with the Fong tag set to 80, you can see I've got Use Edge Breaks turned on. So breaking all the, the leading edges Fongs and choosing Use Edge Breaks gives me an overall really clean result, even with a Fong angle at 80. So I can have a fairly large Fong angle and smooth out those nice, um, these areas here, which were having problems, especially this area in here. 
but I can also have my um, nice sharpened leading edges like that. Now, you notice before when I didn't have broken fong edges, the subdivision surface weight got me halfway there, but didn't get me all the way there. If I delete the edge weighting, oops, I'm going to delete the weight tag. That is getting me halfway there, but not all the way there as well. It gives me a different issue. So I still have broken edges, like broken fong edges, but without the subdivision weight tag, that's also not giving me the result that I want. So you can see that the, the fong angle is broken, which is good, but I'm, I'm getting this rounding as well on the other polygons. And we could come and select the fong tag, once again, bring that down, but then we're causing the same issues. So what I found was it needs to be a combination of both of these things. Broken fong angle or broken fong edges and subdivision surface weighting. And let me come back to edge mode. So we've got all of those. I mean, obviously they're all the same edges as well. So once you've selected all of those edges, just break their fong angle using the break fong shading command. And once again, with the subdivision surface holding down the period key and dragging to the right with the left mouse button. And what you get is this. You get both sharpened leading edges and you get good smoothing of all of your other polygons, all of your other areas. Sometimes you might be able to get away with just broken fong edges. Sometimes you might be able to get away with uh, subdivision weighting. But in this case, I needed both. Now you might be happy to have that as your finished result. I thought the subdivision level wasn't quite high enough. Make sure I've got these all done and make sure I've broken the fong shading. And like I said, you might be happy with that result, but I don't like perfectly sharp edges. I like a little bit of a bevel on there which looks a lot better. If you're viewing it from a distance, that could be all you need. Select that again. If I subdivide that, let's see what sort of result we get. So that's subdivided. We're probably not going to see too much of a difference, maybe on these edges here. Get that off. Yeah, you can see you start to see the faceting around these edges. So the subdivision level wasn't quite high enough. So I needed to subdivide once more. But I also wanted to add some control cuts to the leading edges to give me a micro bevel, which I think looks a lot better. Let's turn that on. So we're getting the rounding or the smoothness that we want, but I'm not getting that micro bevel. So to do that, what I did was use a bevel deformer. Now take a look at the difference here. I'm going to put this into a subdivision surface. Turn off the bevel deformer. Now I, I've actually um, removed the weighting and the broken fong edges because the bevel deformer is actually working on the same edges on these edges. You can see when I select number five, I've got all the edges selected. If I click on the bevel deformer, you can see I have edge selection. So with that selected, I've just come down and I've chosen set selection. You can choose that from the select menu. Where is it? Uh, set selection down there. And it's added the bevel deformer up here right down the bottom can't quite see it in the viewable area there let's hide this dock and adding the bevel deformer holds all of those edges in place so once i've done that i can remove the fong break and also delete the weighting tag because the bevel deformer is doing that job so this is subdivided at a level of one so we're getting nice smoothness 
And we're also getting a little micro bevel on these edges, which looks, I think it looks a lot better. That'll pick up the light. You never want anything to be perfectly sharp. It's always good to add a tiny little bevel there. But what happens is, in this particular case, is just come in here and turn off the subdivision surface. There's a compromise. Um, when I select the bevel deformer, I'm going to turn that off. Look at the bevel deformer settings. And the reason I used a bevel deformer and not the bevel um, tool is because I wanted to test. Obviously, if you use the bevel command, then it's difficult to try different settings um, later on. So with the bevel deformer selected, you can see, let me just make some space here. Turn that on. Notice here I have an end gone. I've got five edges, so one, two, three, four, actually six, six edges. So there's an end gone there. So that's going to cause some problems under subdivision. Well, the choices were for mitering, either default or uniform. Now uniform doesn't give me that end gone, but does gives me this diamond here, and it doesn't look too bad in the corner, but it does look worse in some other areas. Looks good there. If I bring that back to default, looks okay there. So I had to choose between one or the other. There's, see, there's, there's one of those errors. See that error there? And that isn't good. That's going to stand out like anything. So choosing uniform gets rid of that. But then uniform does things like this. You can see that adds an error there. Let's bring that back to default. So that adds an error too. But I can bring a, an edge across there and I can create two quads. So I had to jump backwards and forwards between those two settings, look at all of the problem areas and decide which one was going to give me the least amount of problems. And in the end, I chose uh, default mitering. So once I'd chosen that, then I made that editable to a level of one again. So that added one more level of subdivision. And that's what I got with my final logo. So once I'd done that, I came through and added in these edges to clean these up and you know, flattened out the polygons, added in extra edges, just cleaned up all of the problem areas. Added in an edge there. Made sure that everything was looking good. So that gave me an extra level of subdivision. That gave me the bevels that I wanted and nice clean geometry. And once again, I can drop that into another subdivision surface. And everything's looking really good. See, I've got no. No errors in those areas. Everything's looking nice and clean. So the key, I guess, the key thing to remember with something like this is start low poly and then you know, establish your leading edges low poly using things like weighting. And then as you start to add levels of subdivision, then you can start to add more details. One of the biggest errors is to add details too early and then you mess up your curvature and then when I got to what two levels of subdivision then I actually broke the fong edges and use that with a combination of weighting and subdivided that again and used uh, the bevel deformer and then cleaned up the bevel deformer once I'd made that editable and then I could safely subdivide that again and know I wasn't going to have any errors. Something you might notice is how the top horn here actually comes in front of this ring and that was done using an FFD deformer so I'll just quickly show you that. Turn this one off. So without the FFD obviously it was going to be impossible to get the horn to sit in front and have the rest of the dragon sit inside the ring. 
So I just use an FFD and just move that forward slightly just in point mode just by grabbing points like this and then just moving that forward. And it was okay to do that because the final lo logo render is going to be from front view, so you don't really notice that. Definitely the best way to do that with an FFD because you're not messing up any of the geometry, not adding any lumps and bumps, just getting overall big changes in the shape. And it's one of my favorite deformers. Okay, so that's how I approached modeling the Mortal Kombat Dragon. So thanks for watching. Once again, this is John Dickinson for Boris FX. To learn more about the various Boris FX products or to watch more of these kinds of tutorials, be sure to visit borosfx.com.